Welcome to a video where I nerd out for ooh, 20 minutes. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel and my boudoir. If you are new here, my name is Nikki and this is my channel, The Cloud London. Today I want to talk to you about something very near, dear and close to my heart. And that is... Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds! So I went to go and see the immersive experience, or to go and partake in the immersive experience I should say, and I wanted to film a video to tell you exactly what it was all about. But before I get into that, allow me to nerd out for a good five minutes. So if you know me in real life as an actual human being, you will know that I am an enormous fan of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. I was first introduced to the amazing musical, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, please stop this video, go and find it, and uh, listen to it immediately, preferably in the dark. So I was introduced to the musical version of the War of the Worlds when I was quite little, about six or seven I would say, possibly younger, by my gran who decided to play it to us whilst we were trying to sleep. She said that she'd ordered us a tape and that we were going to listen to it as our bedtime story and I don't think I slept probably for, well, not that night anyway. <laughs> and ever since that first formative experience of listening to The War of the Worlds, I have just been enamoured with it. Um, I was born in Woking. <laughs> weird flex but okay which is where the hg wells book is set and also where jeff wayne decided to set his version as well and um, my mum always really enjoyed the musical version as well so we used to listen to it lots when i was little we had the lp and i would listen to it like every weekend pretty much and since then when i got a bit older i uh, then went to go and see the stage shows and also started bu buying all the merchandise collecting all the different versions of the book, this, that and everything else, um, and so I have amassed quite the collection. I even have a giant poster <laughs> I bought, well I say poster, poster board, from eBay, which is of Richard Burton's head. Now if you know anything about the original version of The War of the Worlds, it was narrated by Richard Burton, so it just seemed apt, but also quite weird to have a giant version of his head in my house. He's currently in my loft because I haven't found a place to put him that does him justice, but at some point he'll be back. So now on to the immersive experience, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, the immersive experience. Now if you don't know anything about this whatsoever, it's a combined experience, so it's got everything from VR through to live actors, through to the uh, original music as well and also some of the combined technology from the shows as well, so things like the hologram and use of real flames. All of that fun stuff which really likes to shit you up. Now, I was really lucky to get a preview of this experience. Because I'm so much of a fan, I also have a War of the Worlds tattoo as well, done by the amazing David Corden. So I was invited, along with another 10 fans or so, to go and take a look at the experience before it actually went live to the public. Now, um, the original plan was for us to have a go through the experience before anybody else, but actually, as these things happen, um, we didn't get a chance to because everything, uh, well, not everything, um, but some things weren't working. So we got a walkthrough and shown some of the technology bits and bobs that were finished. I was really interested to see exactly how they would incorporate everything into making it sort of feel creepy and also set in the Victorian times and how everything would sort of interlock to make it that same narrative that I've enjoyed from the book and also from Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds as well and see if that would actually work. So for me it was really exciting to hear exactly how they'd gone about setting it up. The people that showed us around was actually uh, the tour manager of War of the Worlds as well so he was very used to knowing how to uh, interpret Jeff Wayne's ideas and put them up to the stage so actually putting them into a smaller room might have been slightly easier and also afforded him plenty of ideas to go down that kind of route. Now dot 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 are the ones that are behind putting this production on. Dot 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 are known for Somni which was their uh, a show that was all about sleep from a few years ago. I didn't personally get to go and see that one but I did hear lots of good reviews about it and I was gutted at the time that I actually missed it 
uh, by about a week I found out about it I think just after it ended but I was really glad when I found out that uh, Jeff Wayne was doing this that they were behind it because um, as I said the reviews have been really good from Somni and um, I think sometimes you need to bring new ideas into something particularly when you've been doing it for the last 50 years. Now onto the immersive experience itself we decided to go on a Sunday um, which was a really quiet day uh, the experience itself is set in the city of London so right in the very heart um, and it's more of in the financial district so on a weekend it is dead as a dodo which is actually quite nice to go and wander around and uh, see the deserted streets makes you think a little bit of War of the Worlds as well. Now when you get to the experience it's actually inside, um, the entrance to it is inside a bar which is called the Spirit Man and inside you have a giant fighting machine and lots of various different bits and bobs from the War of the Worlds. Things like the album artwork is all across the walls and the actual paintings themselves come to life which is pretty cool. They've also gone all out with the whole steampunk theme as well, so lots of cogs and what else does steampunk have to it? Cogs, basically. <laughs> the, the Victoriana theme is pretty strong, which is um, quite cool up my street. So when you check into the experience, you get given a wristband and you're told that when the uh, giant Martian fighting machine emits three puffs of coloured smoke which correspond to your wristband, then it's time for you to go in and explore the experience. So we had about 40 minutes before our experience started, so we also had a cocktail as well. So all the cocktails in the bar are also themed. There's kind of little hints about what is about to come. So you've got things like a Peggy's Revenge, I think it's called. Uh, you've got the Red Weed. Um, I think there's a, uh, we had a Dead London Mule, I think it was called, um, which was just a Moscow Mule. But um, yeah, really tasty, nice, decent, strong cocktails because I definitely needed a cocktail to steady my nerves because I was a little bit apprehensive about what was to come. So we went into the experience after the Martian emitted our three puffs of green smoke um, and uh, we were in a very tiny group. There was only four of us actually. Um, so there was me, my other half and then uh, a mum and her young son as well so we were a little interesting group but we got to know each other it was all right so you wait outside the door to go in and then you get beckoned into a darkened alleyway by a lady wearing a steampunky type mask um, and also sort of Victorian clothing uh, she brings you in explains to you exactly sort of health and safety this that and everything else make sure that you don't trip over anything do anything that you shouldn't run in the wrong direction punch the actors etc etc um so we were ushered into a basically a waiting room to go into the old victorian style theater which is where george and carrie the two main characters are about to uh, carry out a theater show for you but in the waiting area you're encouraged to introduce yourself to the group if you don't know each other, which we did, and then you're introduced to all the bits of technology that you will encounter across the way, so particularly the VR stuff, um, they tell you exactly what you need to do. However, throughout the experience, again, it gets reiterated to you as and when you use the VR as to what you're doing, so that's quite good. So to begin with, you are ushered into a little theatre uh, where George and Carrie are holograms and they uh, recount to you the horrible things that happened six years ago uh, with the Martian invasion. So this is after the Martian invasion has happened, it's six years on, and George and Carrie are retelling their story at the theatre. So at that time you're introduced to the classic Eve of the War and some really cool effects, so basically holograms that are projected around the room um, and a cool sort of zoetrope little thing as well. Then you're led into a uh, flashing tunnel uh, which is meant to represent sort of going back in time because you're about to go into George's recollection of what happened. So as you head down you then bump into Ogilvy who is running an open day for the Astrological Society and you're ushered into his observatory and inside the observatory you are told to, told to grab yourself a telescope and start looking. Now the actor who played Ogilvy 
Um, he was good, but I think he was probably a little bit tired by this point. He decided to sort of take on a bumbling role um, and he was repeating himself quite a bit. And I think when you're probably doing that sort of acting work where you're repeating things over and over and over, um, it can probably get a little bit tiring. And also you can probably forget what you've said to the group over and over and over again, even if it is still your lines. And particularly when it is something that is scripted, but also a little bit ad lib, I think it's probably quite easy to forget what you're saying. I liked him, but I, I think he was probably just a little bit tired by that point. So we were looking at the stars through the telescopes um, and then uh, as you're in there, you start to see stars appear, you start to see the puffs of green smoke, etc, etc. Um, and then you start to hear sort of the uh, whoosh of the cylinder falling to earth um, and then also the sound of the cylinder opening as well. There's quite a large crash outside and then Ogilvy wants you to go with him to be a witness to what's happened outside as an amazing meteorological event. So you follow him and then unfolds the opening of the cylinder um, and also you get introduced to the heat ray as well. I won't tell you what happens but obviously if you've listened to the musical you will probably be able to work it out. You're then rescued off the common by a soldier who then wants to whisk you to safety. Now I must say throughout the whole of the experience all of the people portraying soldiers I thought were really really good. The actors in general are pretty good at not breaking character. They interact with you as you were in the story so that's pretty cool as well. So you then descend a very very narrow staircase, spiral staircase at that. So don't think about wearing heels or anything like that. I don't even think you're allowed to uh, participate if you're wearing heels because they're, you need flat shoes for this, otherwise you're not gonna cope with it. So you go uh, down a tiny little spiral staircase and then you are outside a house. Now the soldier follows you down and uh, explains to you that this is George's house and uh, that Peggy, the housemaid, is probably home. Um, he actually tells you about his relationship with Peggy and the fact that he climbs in through the window every now and then to go and see her over night time. So you climb in through the window and you are then in George's living room. Now inside George's living room it is exactly as a Victorian living room would have been uh, super cozy nice little fireplace uh, dining table like yeah really nice so um, one thing for me when I got into the dining room was that the chairs hadn't been reset people that had been in there before us hadn't put the chairs back in and I don't think the uh, actor that was in there as well had uh, kind of clocked that they were a bit sort of out of place so that kind of hinted a bit too much for me as to what was going to happen next even though I knew what was going to happen next because I'd already done the walkthrough before but I thought for the other people that were in the group um, it kind of sort of showed what was going to go down a little bit. Um, so Peggy the housemaid then comes out and welcomes you to the home um, and uh, explains that she's been told to stay inside to keep safe and suggests that we do the same, we'll join her, we'll stay there, it'll be fine at the end. <laughs> However obviously this is only 15 minutes in so it can't really be the end. Um, so so you are ushered to sit down at the dining table and to uh, chill out for a bit. She's going to make you some tea, everything's going to be fine. It's not going to be fine. So at this point you start to hear noises from outside, you can hear shells dropping, you can hear people fighting, um, you can hear you know lots of alien noises, this, that and everything else, lots of banging around and then you start to see lights flashing at the window. Peggy encourages you to do a sing song as well to keep your spirits up which was cool, I don't think the other two people in our group actually knew the song so it was just me and Neil having a good old sing song with Peggy which was quite funny. And as you're having your sing song the lights start to flicker and then they go out and you are thrust into darkness. Now I'm not going to tell you about the next bit because otherwise it will ruin it for you but safe to say poor old Peggy don't make it out alive but whilst the lights are still off you are then rescued by another soldier. This is the bit where the VR begins. So you're taken into sort of a uh, a room which I honestly didn't really look much at because I was uh, being shouted at by soldiers. Uh, so I was too busy trying to sort of go into the room and um, pay attention to what was happening because I knew that we were about to do the VR and I wanted to make sure that it was done properly and that I knew what I was doing. I've done VR before, but obviously this is different because this is actually free roaming VR and I've never done that before. So um, I was trying to listen to what was happening. I had somebody, uh, one of the soldiers that was helping me to put my VR pack on, that actually mine was a bit loose. They were talking to me and helping me 
um, put it on and I was missing what the uh, actor was saying and then she turns to me and says have you got that you know what we're doing and I'm like no <laughs> I'm really sorry I wasn't paying attention and so uh, we had to go giggle about that and she uh, told the girl off. So now I had the VR pack on, everybody in the group had the VR pack on and we were ready to go. Um, the soldier that was leading us was called Curtis um, and she was really cool. Probably my favourite out of all of the actors that we encountered. She did very well at being, uh, portraying being quite frightened but also actually under control as well. So yeah, really good actor. So you then go into the free roaming VR and uh, you go through three different scenes whilst you're in the free roaming VR. You're encouraged to wander around and interact with things as you go. Now um, the VR itself is it's okay, um, it's pretty cool, um, but you know it is it's not lifelike um, because, because I just don't think VR is there yet, I don't think VR is necessarily lifelike. I think they've done the best they can with what they've got um, and it's really cool to be in VR and to see you know a huge big fighting machine coming towards you at one point the foot comes down right by your head um, and you're encouraged to sort of follow George around. So in the VR the people that you're with are also portrayed as Victorian characters as well so Neil was dressed as a Victorian lady so we had a uh, good laugh chasing each other around um, but the VR doesn't quite sync up with how uh, where your body is so we found that we were actually kind of hitting each other not you know forcefully but kind of bumping into each other um, quite often and I think the other two people that were in our group as well were a little bit frightened to sort of move around a bit. If you're in a big group it makes it quite difficult because you don't know who the other people are because a lot of the Victorian characters are also portrayed the same so uh, you know you kind of have one Victorian lady um, and I think sort of a Victorian boy maybe. Um, as I said we only have four of us in a group so we only got to see four different types of character and I think three of those were the same so <laughs> not the biggest variation. So we go through the three scenes then uh, we were kind of bumbling around so much that we had to be rescued <laughs> by the soldiers so they came and actually got us. Um, that made me jump because somebody grabbed hold of my hand to lead me into the next room and so we did that and then they took off all our VR stuff hung it up for us um, and then we were thrust into the next scene. So the next scene was poor dear Curtis had suffered a bit of an injury uh, whilst we were messing around in the VR, had suffered quite a large cut to her leg so uh, we had to rescue her and make sure that she was safe, perform some first aid on her and then we were sent on to the boat to escape so uh, we had to crawl through a tunnel well, I say crawl through a tunnel, crawl through a hole in a wall to get onto the boats. So you're then into another VR section after that. So you pay Perry, who looks after the boats. You get sent on a little rowing boat. Again, you go through a few different scenes for this. So you kind of have a little bit of loading time in between. Kind of takes you out a little bit of the VR. On the boat, this is probably my favorite bit of VR, which is in it. Um, you're drifting down the Thames and Forever Autumn is playing. And you're getting to see fighting machines climbing all over London. Uh, blasting heat ray out across the Thames, uh, really cool and you also get some kind of stuff for your senses there as well um, whilst you're on the boats and then you get thrust into the battle between Martian Fighting Machine and Thunderchild. Now this bit if you are motion sick I do not recommend going. Um, you do get a break after this bit though so if you only get like a little bit motion sick then I would you know still do it. I don't suffer from that kind of thing but I do get seasick so <laughs> if you get instantly seasick don't do it um, but actually I was fine I, it's, you know and I get quite badly seasick quite quickly. And you see Thunderchild getting attacked by one of the Martians as well and then uh, you are also attacked by one of the Martians as well um, and yeah it does make you feel a bit and then you survive that bit, hooray! And then Perry comes to tell you that he's very pleased because he's found a pub, woo! So you get to leave the boat and to go to the pub. So this is now the intermission, 20 minutes in the Redweed bar. Uh, they tell you this at the beginning, but I would recommend just reiterating, make sure that you take your card with you, it's a cashless bar. But we'd heeded the warning and we got ourselves a very tasty beer, so we had a Truman's Raw beer and it was lovely. We were only in the bar I would say probably for 15 minutes 
at the most. Um, so we were then ushered into the second half. The bar staff in the Redweed Bar were all really nice, really friendly, um, all really lovely people. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that every single person that we spoke to whilst we were there was so nice, friendly and just genuinely lovely and really also enthused for the product they were delivering as well which was really cool. So the second half is much shorter than the first half and in my opinion not as good um, and I think that's just due to the source material as well. There's not a lot to play with in the second half unless you were going to try and do huge massive grandiose sets of you know sort of dead London. I guess they could have done more of that with the VR and the only hint to the red weed that you have is in the red weed bar itself and also nothing about the black smoke that kind of thing so there are a few elements that they've dropped from the source material just to make it a bit easier on themselves I think. You then head into the section with Parson Nathaniel and Beth and Beth is performed by Carrie Hope Fletcher who uh, if you know and have seen the stage shows um, then she's also played Beth in the stage shows before. She's a really good actor she does a lot of West End stuff. You go into a section where you are basically held again before you go into the VR section just to make sure that everybody's gone through, um, told to repent your sins, again with an actor um, and again she was really good. She picked on me to say a prayer so make sure if you're going you've got one ready because I don't think she was particularly impressed with my one sentence one <laughs> even though it did seem to make her slightly chuckle under her breath. So you're then ushered into a confessional booth on your own and again back into the VR. So if you know the story you know what happened next. Um, at this time you are in a church rather than outside the church and you are grabbed by a Martian and taken into the basket so inside the Martian fighting machine itself. Possibly even a handling machine it doesn't really show you what it is. So in this section again uh, I won't tell you what happens but I had something happen to me um, and Neil unfortunately missed out on it because I think they didn't realise because it was such a few people in there um, I think that they actually missed which confessional boxes we went into um, and they found me but I don't think they found him so uh, we got released out of them but then they forgot to release me so I was still in there quite happily sort of going okay am I being do I stay do I go so I nearly ended up being left behind then the actress in this bit um, she was doing the best with what she'd been given <laughs> and um, I think unfortunately her part wasn't really thought out that well because she was looking for her sister and she said if you see her sister to let her know but we uh, there was no real follow-up to that and it just all kind of seemed a bit like she developed something because she'd not really been given much to go with um, so she basically takes us out of the confessional booths and then sends us down the arm of a Martian fighting machine which was great fun which is basically a slide so that was uh, a lot of fun and then you are plunged into the sewers of the artilleryman and where he's decided to make his new home. Now the artilleryman wasn't in any mood to be nice to us to begin with and then he came around and then he uh, decided to give champagne to Jacob who was definitely underage uh, <laughs> which was really funny. Um, I think it's probably just fizzy water but he was doing the best with what he'd been given. There was only four of us and it was really hard to play off the group with only being four people there again there wasn't too much to bounce off particularly when you're just in a smaller group because people aren't you know there's not so you then go into these really cool dome things which uh, inside them have basically the animated artwork from Brave New World and then the artillery man tells you his plan and exactly what what he's going to do and how you know it's going to be amazing um, but he did a really good job of coming across as being slightly deranged and also quite angry um, and at one point he shouted at me because I was smiling and I think he thought I was laughing but I was just having a really good time <laughs> and I think he just picked up on uh, me smiling and just tried to use it to his advantage to uh, get us into the next room, so fair enough. So then you're sent into a room to help look for some blueprints and this is where the kind of the link between the ends didn't really work too well. Um, whilst you're in that room there is a voiceover from jo from George but actually we went in uh, not quite on cue I don't think and it didn't quite match up with exactly what was meant to be happening um, so it was a little bit 
confusing and I wasn't I couldn't listen to what was being said because we were told to find these blueprints so then you're kind of rooting around and then again another soldier comes in to move you on to the next part so you are then taken into a room which has got hot air balloons in it and you are flown away they so get to ascend again into um this is another vr part so you're then up in the air in the hot air balloons flying over london and seeing that the martians are slowly dying and falling over and then you join a kind of weird victorian dance party if you go and see it look out for the people the uh, the characters in there that are dancing in front of the martian this made me and neil laugh quite a lot i won't ruin the ending for you but unfortunately on ours as well we had a uh, a failure of the equipment um kind of around about say two to three minutes before the end mine kept on working but unfortunately Neil stopped um, and then actually when we left the uh, one of the technicians came up to us and said would you like to go back in again and do the last bit um, because he missed out on like the last two to three minutes or so but I'd actually already explained it to him by that point and I think he was just a bit like oh I don't want to go back in and be the last person in there so even though I would have gone back in and quite happily watched it again um, but yeah I think he was kind of like right that's it it's done now um, and then you come out of there and and that's basically the end um, and you're sort of ushered into again a sort of ending kind of theatre room well I say theatre room kind of again a bit of a holding room go back up some stairs and then you are decontaminated and then you're let out into the bar and as you go out into the bar it's quite cool because the uh, people that are working on the desk to check people in shout survivors and everybody goes woo so that kind of makes you feel quite good when you come out we stay to have a drink afterwards as well and uh, the bar staff really lovely people and I said to them uh, if I have a tattoo of the <laughs> one of the beer labels which I did uh, scavenger beer which is a war of the world's beer I think they've made especially for it um, do I get a free pint and they said most definitely so we actually got a free round for me having a tattoo which is really cool so there we have it that is Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds immersive experience. If you are around in London, I highly suggest that you do it. I don't think it's touring, so if you want to come and see it, you're going to have to do it. And it's just something really, really different. I'm not a fan of doing something like that, and I don't think if it hadn't been War of the Worlds, I don't think I would have done it. But it's made me actually think about doing other different bits of immersive theatre as well, because it was loads of fun. So, um, yeah. And one thing to finish on is that when I went to the preview of the event i actually got given a signed print by jeff wayne himself uh, we also got to have a video call with him um, and i showed him my tattoo i've shown him my tattoo before um, but very briefly uh, and it was a long long time ago and i've had quite a bit added to it since then so we actually had uh, a good decent long chat about my tattoo um, and as usual really nice guy um, we also had uh, jeff wayne's daughter anna marie who who plays Carrie in the immersive experience um, and yeah just lovely lady and was just the sweetest on the evening um, even putting up with the uh, the nerdy nerds like us so that was uh, that was really cool of her and here we have it this is my uh, my signed print from Jeff himself and um, it's the coolest thing I possibly own so there we have it I'll stop nerding out now and leave you to get on with it <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for joining me for something that is completely different, but is something that I am so incredibly passionate about that I love it so much. Thank you for joining me. I just wanted to tell you all about that because it's just, you know, it's my love. <laughs> if you're new here, please subscribe and hit the like button as well. If you're not, thanks. Thanks if you're already subscribed. You're the best. I don't know what that was. And I will see you all next time. Also, if you like War of the Worlds, please let me know. I love it when people love War of the Worlds because usually I'm like, yeah, I love War of the Worlds. And people are like, the Tom Cruise film. Yeah, mate, I haven't said that. I actually like the Tom Cruise film. Anyway, I'm going now. Bye.